Uh, yeah, so just like maybe before we start, like I can show you a couple of things on the Canvas side. Um, so just in case, um, like after, at the, you probably noticed after yesterday's class, but at the end of each class, I'll send you like a summary of what we did. Uh, and there, that's where I'll, um, uh, Send you the link to the video recorded the recordings of the uh, of the of the meeting, and at the beginning also um, I'm going to be attaching the 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 tablet notes, the iPad notes, um, and I'll recommend you like what assignments from my lab you can work on. So that's more or less what will like typically what I'll do uh, every class. Um, like again, uh, after cl today's class, I'll send you like an information about uh, the quiz we'll have tomorrow. As I mentioned, like, well, especially because it's a third quiz, so like, I, I won't try to do anything um, to to crazy. But in general, any in any case, I'll always give you like a list of problems to work on for the quiz. And then the, the quiz would just be um, like, say two of those problems. And I would just like uh, literally copy paste the question. So that way, like, and it's more like for me to kind of, give you incentives to go on on all the problems that I suggest. And also think about it more like some sort of like um, feedback uh, from me to you so that when I grade your quiz, I can let you know, well, you have to do this in, a, in this way uh, and things like that. Uh, so both the quizzes and the exams, they will be, um, I don't know if you can see uh, the assignment here. So I posted yesterday like a practice quiz. Um, so like all the exams and all the quizzes will take place. I mean, I'll create the quiz and the exam on Canvas. So, and then to take it, you'll uh, just use responders. Uh, I don't know if everyone tried uh, doing that um, uh, for this quiz. I can, let me change the deadline. Um, uh, there was nothing like on this quiz uh, specific to, oh, okay. Okay, do at 11. Uh, 59 p.m. So you can still try it, like if you haven't um to uh to do this, but that's more or less how the quizzes will take place. So yeah, the quiz and the exams will will be online. Um, but basically, what will happen tomorrow when we do the first quiz is like say I'll do like the regular. We'll have like a regular class for say like the first like 90 or 80 minutes. And then I'll stop the class and I'll let you go to the do the quiz assignment on Canvas, uh, if that makes sense. So. so yeah, nothing is in person. Is that okay? Are there any other questions about it? But yeah, I'll send you an announcement after today's class. I just need to know how much we covered today. And once we, I know that I'll, I'll tell you which problems to study for tomorrow's quiz. Uh, is that okay? I don't know if there are any questions in general before we start. Um, today we'll probably do like uh, some sort of like mini game um, at some point uh, as well, just to make this a little bit more interactive. Uh, I should also see if I can. There was also like someone has sent me like a um the link to like a group me, uh, I just posted it on the chat. Uh, if you want to join that group me, um, just to you know kind of keep in touch with everyone who's taking the class because like one of the disadvantages of like the class being online is that you cannot really interact as easily as you would um if this were in person. So, um. If you want to just join that group meet to like, you know, like get in touch with one another, I think that would be a good idea. Um, is that okay? In any case, I have still office hours after today's class. So uh, if you want to ask me something more specific, um, you can just uh, either from the assignment or something else, uh, you can come to office hours if you want to go over something. Okay, let me see.
Okay. Okay, so today uh, we're actually going to begin like in the like the material of the course in a sense like yesterday it was more like introductory although we did some things that will are definitely useful for the rest of the uh, of the course but today we'll go into more details on um like yeah the stuff that you need to know and so the first thing uh that goes into any calculus course is kind of like discussing um what limits are because that's kind of what's used to find the any other thing that you may be interested in so uh, like yesterday, for example, I mentioned like this thing about how to find like an area of a shape or how to find the slope of a tangent line. And both of those things uh, at the end of the day will involve some sort of like limit. So that's why we have to um, take a, um, uh, just like spend some time discussing what limits are. I mean, they're not, um, too bad is you just have to be a, a little bit uh, cautious uh, sometimes when you work with them. Okay, so let me just tell you, I mean, there are kind, certain different kinds of limits, but I'll start with like the most basic one. So uh, trying to tell you what it means to, to find like a limit of something. So here f of x is going to be a function. So this is going to be some function. So for example, um, f of x could be like x squared plus x, or f of x could be x minus one over x plus one, or f of x could be, I think this is the one that we were working with last time, uh, yesterday near the end, x squared minus four over x minus two, okay? So uh, f of x is going to be like just some expression of x. So uh, what I'm going to tell you now is what does it mean to try to find the limit of, um, of f of x? So what does this mean? Okay. So the way you read this expression, uh, it, the, the way you're supposed to read that is this reads as the limit of f of x as x approaches a okay and what does that mean uh again uh, feel free to interrupt me at any point um i may miss if someone uses like the raise your hand option on zoom i may miss that so you can unmute yourself or just type it on the chat i'll be checking the chat regularly so if there's any confusion just um Yes, uh, please interrupt me. So what does this mean? Um, it means uh, how, how do the values f of x take behave as x gets closer and closer to A without uh, being A itself. Oops. 
Uh, maybe I should put it here like this is red as So let me just give you an example, which is related to what we were doing uh, yesterday to, to make this more concrete. So imagine like someone gives you the limit as X approaches two of X squared minus four over X minus two, okay? What does this expression mean? So what this means is, so this means what are the values uh, oops. what are the values x squared minus four over x minus two taking as you let Uh, X get closer and closer to two. Uh, so in a way, uh, finding trying to find a limit is kind of trying to make a prediction about the values uh, that your expression is going to take when you move the variable closer to the value that you care about. Uh, because, like, notice, like this is like the this is basically the big issue or like the most important thing about uh, this limit stuff. So notice, uh, you can't. This is the most important part. So this is like the key idea. You, in, in general, you cannot simply replace X with the value that you care about. You can't simply replace X with the value you care about. because typically you'll get something that makes no sense. Typically you will get something undefined. So what do I mean by that? Like, um, so what I mean is like, for example, if you look at this expression, right? which is like the one I'm, I, I'm writing, uh, I wrote before. If you just try to do like um, the most straightforward thing and put X, replace X with two, right? Change X to two, what do you get? You get uh, two, let me put this in colors. Uh, you get two square, which is, uh, I mean, that's going to be four. And then you get two minus two, right? And so what do you get? You get zero divided by zero. And the the thing is like, um, well, division by zero is not possible, right? So if there is not like a good way to say what the number this thing should be, which uh, makes no sense. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, whenever you encounter one some of these limit problems, you the idea is that you should not just try to plug in the value that I'm giving you. Um, so let me stop here to see if there are any questions of what I have said up to this point. Is this making sense? So again, like whenever you see an expression like a limit, 
do not do not just i mean like again like this is kind of like the the interesting cases the ones we will spend most time on do not just substitute the 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 variable with the number that you see here because most of the times it's like a you know it's like it wrecks everything you kind of destroyed uh, 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 all the expression so so the idea is that you kind of have to manipulate the expression first and hope that it will give you something where it becomes clear what's going on. So the idea with, and we'll do a bunch of examples today so that you get used to this. And I'll also let you work on some of your own to make sure that this is making sense. So the idea is that uh, you must manipulate, like you must manipulate f of x first uh, so that it becomes more clear what's happening with the values it, it is taking. So for example, um, in, uh, in this expression that we, are, we were studying last time, uh, I don't know if anyone remembers yesterday uh, what we did to kind of simplify this. So what was the idea uh, for this expression? Right, you were supposed to do the difference of squares. Perfect. So if you do the difference of squares, and this is actually how you're expected to solve these problems in practice. So I'm kind of writing it in a way that if I give you like a problem, like that's kind of like how would it, I would expect you to do to write this out. So if you change the numerator into x minus two divided by x plus two, sorry, x minus two times x plus two, and you do nothing to the denominator, then now it is clear that you have um, that there's a common factor here, uh, which appears both in the numerator and the denominator. So you can get rid of it. Okay, and the idea is that. I mean, it's kind of like crossing your fingers and hoping that this happens. Like, if, uh, but the idea is like, if you are successful and you manipulate the expression into something that's easier to analyze, like in, in this case, then you are like, well, uh, now you're looking at X plus two and it is easier to know how X plus two is behaving when you start taking X closer and closer to two. Right, so you have to imagine that you're taking X to be uh, 1.9, 1.999, 1.9999, 1 you know, like you, you are supposed to kind of make numbers closer and closer to, so if you start getting like 3 plus 9, 3.9, 3.99, 3.9999, or 4.001, depending if, if, if the values of X you were choosing were slightly bigger than two. But what I'm trying to say is that the numbers are getting are getting closer and closer to two. Uh, I mean, to four, um, and so that's why we said that we end up saying that this limit equals four. Is that making sense? Any questions up to this point? Uh, so the idea uh, is that, um, okay. 
So let's go back. Um, let's go back to this step. Is is getting to this step uh, okay? Is that making sense? Okay, good. So you have x plus two, right? The idea is that you're looking at x plus two and you're thinking like the idea of a limit is you're thinking that, that you start putting numbers x um, where it, you're getting closer and closer to two. So in fact, we can make a table if you prefer. Maybe this is useful. Um, so imagine that you, what's the number, uh, what's the value for x that's close to two? So you could take, uh, for example, x to be 1.9, right? The number is close to two. So if you take x to be 1.9, what happens with x plus two? That becomes 3.9, right? Or if you take x to be 1.99, that's even closer to two, right? Now x plus two becomes 3.99, right? Or you could take x, uh, something slightly bigger than two, you could take it to be 2.01, uh, Right, and then you get a uh, four point zero one, or you could take x to be like two point zero zero one, and then you get x uh, x plus two to become four point zero zero one. Is that making sense so far? So good. And so the idea of a limit, like the limit, is kind of asking when you choose all these numbers, right? When you keep choosing numbers that are even closer to two, right? What are these numbers getting closer to, right? And so my claim is that this is getting closer to, you know, uh, four, uh, if that makes more sense now. Uh, any, I mean, this is actually an important part, so it's good to, um, uh, good to, to make sure that everyone is on the same page. Like, like in a more concrete way, what we're trying to do is rewrite the expression in such a way that you are allowed to just like plug in the value of x, right? So because literally you get four, you can get four if you just replace x with two here, right? Because then you get two plus two. The thing is like you were not allowed to replace it here because if you had replaced it at the earliest stage, you just get zero over zero and that's not clear. So it's kind of like a game where you're just trying to rewrite your expression of X in a way where like the plugin is allowed. So I, let me write that down to make it um, um, to see if it makes sense. So the idea is to try to rewrite F of X in such a way or let me write it rewrite your expression rewrite your expression in terms of x in such a way uh, that um, you can substitute, you can replace X with A and, and, and get a, an actual number. You can replace X with A and get a value. Okay, so just to make sure, I mean, uh, is this kind of one of those things that you start getting used to it after you do many examples? So let me write one for you to think about and then we'll discuss it together. So let's do, um, let's say if, here's another example.
Okay. So imagine that I gave you something like that, right? So what this is asking is, um, this is asking, how does this quantity behave? How does this behave when you start choosing numbers that get closer and closer to zero, right? So it is kind of like uh, asking for the behavior. I mean, it's kind of like a prediction. You're trying to make a prediction about how this, uh, how this be, this quant this expression behaves when x is very very close to zero. So very very close to zero could be like 0 0.001, 0 0.000001, like or minus point. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, like things like of that sort. But the thing, and this is kind of what um, makes like this kind of relatively interesting is that you cannot just plug in zero, right? Notice that uh, you can't plug zero, plug x equals zero immediately, right? Right away. Since you would get what? Well, uh, you have to, right, like you would get zero on the numerator, you get zero squared plus zero, right? Divided by zero minus zero squared, right? So you get zero over zero. And the thing is like zero over zero, you have to think it's kind of like the enemy of the course. Like you can you have to always stay away from it. So this is not, this is bad. Like this is not something we want to see. Like I can, I, I don't have enough information uh, to keep working on with that. Because we don't, we don't, um, you know, it, it's not uh, like you know having zero in the numerator and having zero in the denominator. It's not like they just cancel out, like because you cannot divide by zero. So it's undefined, and so the idea with all these limits is like to think: well, can you uh, manipulate the, the expression algebraically first, so that actually becomes something that you can understand. Um, easier so let me give you one or two minutes so like let's give you two minutes think about what you could do in this expression uh, to simplify it so that it becomes more clear what what is happening with the values this uh this thing is taking so yeah think about it for like two minutes and now we'll discuss it uh together to see what the answer should be i'll just bring some water Uh, okay, so the what uh, what do you think the answer should be? Anyone found found something interesting? Uh, okay, good. Let's try it out. So. So again, you notice. Know um in all of these cases like the idea is to you know cross your fingers and try to simplify things in a way that's uh clear what to do so for example uh here like you have to think well let's fa factorize an x so 
because there's an X that you can factor out both in the numerator and the denominator. So this becomes X over times X plus one and X times, uh, X times one minus X. So far so good, everyone with me here. And then this is great because there's an X both in the numerator and the denominator. So can you, you can get rid of it. And when you do that, you get limit as X approaches zero of X plus one divided by one minus X. Is that making sense? And then, uh, I mean, you can kind of do it like on your head for a while, but in the end, like kind of becomes more automatic, like, like the thing is like, now you have to imagine how is this expression behaving, you know, as you plugging X values of X closer and closer to zero. So when X is getting closer and closer to zero, the numerator is getting closer and closer to one, right? It could be 1.1 or 1.11 or 0 0.99 or, or something like that. And the same is happening with the denominator, right? It's also getting closer and closer to one. So both the numerator and the denominator are getting closer and closer to one. And so what you would say, want to say is that this is like one divided by one, which is just one. So you want to say that the, the limit is one. Is that making sense? Uh, any questions about this so far so good? So it, it is not that bad in the sense like you have to first like do some simplification and hope that like the expression becomes uh, more clear as to what is happening with the values of for what for what you were given. I mean, this may look a little bit artificial, but as you'll see, like once we start talking about this uh, tangent line problem um, next week, probably um, you'll see that like the things like many times when you write things down, they just uh, they kind of look like things like zero divided by zero, by zero, where it's not so clear what's going on. But then uh, using this limit idea, you can kind of like manipulate it first so that it gives you like a more clear answer. So it's not like, you know, it looks like a game at this moment, but you'll see um, in a one or two lessons that it actually is like a useful thing to do. It's like a natural thing that happens. It's not like art, uh, artificial in that sense. Okay. So before giving you some properties about this, uh, this limit satisfy, let me give you one more problem to think about, which is a little bit more, um, slightly more complicated. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll give you some properties um, that limits have. Um, so, Okay. So again, uh, for something like this, if you just try to plug in X with, replace X with one, you'll see that you'll get zero here. And here you get one plus one, which is two and two minus two is zero, right? So you will still get zero over zero. So this is kind of like, a, again, like one of these interesting limits. So the idea is not to just like plug in, but first you have to simplify it in a slight, in, um, in some way and try to see if you can get something useful. So like before just me doing it, let me give you like maybe two or three minutes for you to think first, like if there's like a useful way to simplify this in order to find like an, uh, the limit for it. So yeah, uh, let's say around 140, uh, 
for you to have like two or three minutes to think about this and then we'll discuss it. Uh, okay, so I don't know if uh, anyone was able to find what this uh, limit should look like. Any guesses on what the value should be? Good. Okay, so let's start to work it out together to see what's going on. So um, what's happening here is like, again, you're supposed to try to simplify the expression. The numerator, it doesn't, there doesn't seem much you can do with it at this at this moment, but the denominator it still has to like you know there's a common factor of x you can try to pull out. So if you do that, you get something like this. Okay, and then now you have like a quadratic polynomial. And again, like you kind of have to think about like the nature of this problem. So in this problems, most of the time, usually what we're going for is like some sort of like um, simplification. So that kind of suggests, well, uh, hopefully if everything turns out well, like you will be able to cancel out this X minus one. So that kind of gives you a hint that maybe when you factorize this polynomial, there should be like an X minus one. And it, that ends up being, um, what's what happens uh in this case so you can um let me write it with a different color so you can factorize this polynomial as x minus one times what times x plus two Okay, and this miraculous term x minus one appears in the denominator now, so you can cancel it. In the now you just get one in the numerator, and in the denominator you get x and x plus two. And again, uh. Now you are, um, you just have, uh, you have to think like the usual stuff, like what happens when you start choosing values of X closer and closer to one and you see, well, nothing happens with the numerator because it doesn't depend on X and the denominator, um, 
this x is getting closer to one and x plus two, well, that's getting closer to one plus two, which is three. And so you get, that's why you get one third. Is that making sense? Any questions about this so far so good? Uh, so the reason why you're replacing with one, uh, sorry, just to explain this uh, again. So the reason why you're replacing this with one is because uh, if you notice here, this is saying that X is approaching one. So this is saying that X is going to take values closer and closer to one. So uh, kind of what you see underneath the limit is uh, what indicates what X should be replaced with, if that makes sense. I mean, I got that on the direct message uh, of why I'm replacing x with one. Is that, I don't know if um, if that is making sense. So, for example, here I'm replacing x with one, but in the previous example, I replace x with zero because it said uh, x approaches zero. Is that okay? So yeah, you always. Uh, need to pay attention to uh, what's underneath the limit because that's kind of giving you an indication of what um, what the replacement is going to be with, uh, which value X is going to be replaced with. Okay, so now, um, okay, before, now that we did some warm up examples, like now you have like maybe some idea for how these limits are behaving. Let me give you some rules which kind of help to make this like more mechanical. So, so let me write some limit rules. Um, so let's see. The first one is uh, limits and polynomials. So what that means is like if f of x is a polynomial, and I'm gonna give you some examples of what I mean by that in a moment. Like f of x is like x cubed minus 5x plus 2, or examples like here are some examples. Or f of x is like x to the 4 plus x plus 2, or maybe f of x is like, you know, x squared minus 2x plus 1, or f of x is like x to the 5th plus x cubed plus x i mean any of these work like you you have like a polynomial like so a polynomial was just like uh the variable x raised to different integer powers and that's just being added or subtracted with certain numbers right or certain coefficients okay 
So if you have something like this and you want to find the limit, then for an expression like this, it is literally just like a direct substitution. Then So for example, if I, I gave you like the limit, I mean, this is like a more silly, uh, a more elementary case. So that's why I didn't want to start with this one because it would have been seem too silly to do this at the beginning. But I mean, it is still something that is true. So for example, if I got given you the limit as X approaches negative one of X cubed plus, uh, sorry, minus five X, plus two, right? Uh, then that, if you wanted to find that limit, then that is really just what you get by replacing X with negative one. So you will get something like negative one cubed minus five times negative one plus two, and that's um, negative one plus five plus two. And that's what this is six, right? I mean, like a more um, practical way to think about this is like in this case, like, you know, for this polynomial or this expression, you don't have any of this weird zero divided by zero by zero situations. So it is really just like plugging in. Um, or like just to take one of the others, like if you had given you the limit as X approaches zero of X squared minus two X plus one, that is just really zero squared minus two times zero plus one. And that's just one. Is that making sense? Uh, are there any questions about this? So again, I didn't want to start with this one per se because it was kind of too easy maybe, but it is something that is still true. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, oops, like here. Let me see. Okay, good. Um, is that making sense? Any questions about this? Um, and I, in fact, like if you notice what we were doing in the previous problems, so was kind of simplified your expression uh, so that it would become either a polynomial or like a ratio of polynomials where you could just like plug in uh, easily. So that's why the polynomial case is kind of useful because like the goal is kind of to get to either a polynomial or like a ratio of polynomials where like you can just plug in uh, literally. So here's something more important. So now let me give you some more important properties about limits, some other properties. So
let's say uh, if let's say that you found that you know, let's say that um, you know that the limit of a certain function or expression is some number and the limit of another function is another number. But like here it's important that um, that the, the, you're approaching the same value of A, right? So what do you think would be, for example, like if you had to make a guess, here's like the first property. So let me use a different color. If I ask you to find the limit of X approaches A of F of X plus G of X, what would you guess that would be the answer for? What would you guess the answer should be here? Right, like the idea is like uh, when you have a limit of a sum, uh, if both limits exist individually, you, then you can just add them up. So for example, yeah, let me write that down and then give you like an example. So here's an example. Imagine that I had to ask you to find this limit um, Well, let me see. Let me just check uh, for a second if that's the one I wrote last time. Um, X squared plus X, X minus. Right, so for example, imagine I, had, I, I, asked you, I asked you to find this limit. Well, what this property is saying is that, uh, you know, you can kind of break it down into two pieces, right? So you can break it down as a limit as X approaches zero of X plus the limit as X approaches zero of X squared plus X divided by X minus X squared, okay? And uh, like this breakdown is convenient because the first one is easy to find, it's just zero, right? And the second one, we did that in a previous example and we had found that it was one. Okay, so let me put here one because it was from a previous example. Okay, so the overall answer is one. Is that making sense? So it this is a convenient property because sometimes you'll be given like an expression uh, which would look too complicated, but sometimes you can break it into individual pieces and then just analyze each, each piece uh, separately. Is that making sense? Any questions up to this point? In fact, um, Nothing, there was nothing special about the sums. Like the same would have happened if it had been like a subtraction. So I can write it like explicitly, but it's basically the same idea, right? If I asked, had asked you to find the, um, the limit as X approaches A of F of X minus G of X, that's also just like kind of, you can break it down. So it's like L1 minus L2, okay? So, and that's, there's not like a fundamental difference um, between the sum, the addition or the subtraction cases.
Uh, another one that's important is that uh, if you have a constant, then um, you can kind of pull it out of a limit. So, where C is a constant. So just to give you an example of what I mean by this, like um, just to go back to, oh, let's do this one. Like here's an example of this property. So if you remember, um, we had studied this, we had studied something like this before. So three X squared minus what? It would be now 12 over X minus two. So if you look at something like this, you can factorize a three, oops, sorry. You can factorize a three in the numerator so you get X squared minus four over X minus two. So you see now the constant three, the constant three is multiplying all of this, right? So the, the property of the limit says that you can take it outside the limit when it's a constant, so you get three times a limit that says X approaches two of X squared minus four over X minus two. And we saw this one last time. I mean, at the beginning of today's class or also yesterday, we had seen that this, this, um, this limit was four, right? This was from a previous example. So you get 12. You get three times four. Well, let me put it like this one. You get three times four, so that's 12. Is that making sense? So what I'm trying to say is that kind of like the obvious things that you may have done with limit without thinking about it, they actually kind of do work. So um, it does behave like you would like it to behave. Then the other, uh, like there's a couple more, like the other ones is uh, the same kind of happens with multiplication and, and division. So that if you have like a limit, so what well, this should be property four, that if you have like a limit of like, um, you know, of a product, that's just L1 times L2. So for example, like if I had given you the limit at X approaches, so here's an example. If I, if I give you the limit as X approaches zero of X plus two times like what? Just to do the, the usual one we have been doing. Right, what the property says is that you can't break this into a product of two separate limits. And now the first one is should hopefully it's easy. That's just two. And the second is like a previous example, right? Um, the, the one that I have been referring to all the time. 
and that's just one, right? So you just get two times one, which is two. Is that okay? And uh, kind of uh, the fifth one is the same for a ratio for a division, but uh, the only thing is that that's assuming that the denominator, provided the denominator, uh, the value for the denominator is non-zero. So, so if you have like a limit of x approaches a of f of x divided by g of x, that's just L1 over L2 provided uh, L2 is non-zero. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, let me scroll up and I'll write the example in, uh, for this one in a second. So for example, in this one, um, if I give you, let's say X approaches one of X squared plus X plus one divided by two X cubed minus one, right? This is a ratio. And the idea is like, as long as the limit for the denominator is on zero, you can really just uh, take the ratios of the, you can find like the limit for the numerator and the limit for the denominator and just take their ratios. So what I'm trying to say is that this is the same as, oops. Here's this is the same as the limit as x approaches one of x squared plus x plus one divided by the limit as x approaches one of two x cubed minus one. And what well, well the, the numerator numerator is going to give you three. Right, and the denominator is two minus one, so you end up with three as the overall limit. Is that making sense? Uh, any questions up to this point? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, they will be uh, posted on the same announcement um, that I showed at the beginning of the class. Any other questions? Uh, and then the last one and uh, is the following. And these are like kind of all the basic limit properties after that you can kind of build on, on this. So the last one is that the limit as uh, like X approaches A of F of X to the R here is like some sort of power. So it's just L1 to the R provided um, L1 to the R makes sense. So I'm about to uh, explain what that what I mean by that. So this, uh, and I will, I will do like a mini break after I finish doing this property. So that like, uh, you know, uh, if someone wants to go to the restroom or whatever, uh, you can do so. 
So imagine that I give you the limit, for example, x to the one of uh, root of x squared plus one, right? Well, if you remember like how to rewrite these radicals, like this is like the same as the limit of x squared plus one to the one half, right? And so what this property is saying is that you can kind of put the limit inside the square root um, or so. And then what, what does that give you? Two to the one. Okay, and that's just square root of two. Is that, is that okay? So when you have, like what I'm, what I'm saying is that when you have square roots or cubic roots or roots of, or, or other powers, like, you know, then you can take the limit inside the, the, the root, uh, for example, if you want. Is that okay? Let me zoom out a little bit here so that everyone can see this. Is that making sense? Um, Okay, I think this is a good, uh, these are kind of like all the basic limit rules that you need to know. So it's a good way to do a mini pause. So let's take like a, like let's me like a 2.15, like five minute break for people to, you know, relax, go to the bathroom. And after we go back, come back, I'll do like a mini game. So if you have a cell phone or something like that, just uh, take, have it with you or just something where you can write for you to just like do some calculations. But it won't be greater or anything. It's just to do something like a slightly more interactive. So, uh, but yeah, let's do that at two fifteen if that sounds good. So I'll see you like in five minutes. I'll I'll pause the recording and then uh, once we reconvene, I'll. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um. Hopefully, everyone is back. So uh, yeah, what I thought we could do now is like um, sort of an interactive activity. Let me see if I can share my screen where I want you to see this. Um, okay. Can everyone see the screen on uh, uh, this thing? So yeah, try to join join that. Again, this won't be great, it is for you to um, practice. So it's, uh, it is kind of like a game um, for, uh, let's see if I can see here how many are joining. Okay, yeah, I, can, I will be able to see here how many of you have joined. So it will be like a multiple, it's kind of like a multiple cho choice game um, with limited questions. Uh, not every single limit question may be doable with what we have said so far, but like, just give it a shot. Um, and then we'll discuss like the, the solutions to these problems. Um, but it's just want to see how, how well it goes. Yeah. So there might be like two or three, I think there are 10 multiple choice questions. Uh, the majority of them should be relatively quick, but there might be two or three that you may still not know how to solve them and then we'll go over these but it's just more like for experimentation purposes uh but yeah it, it won't count towards your grade so i'll just wait to see if everyone can log in before starting it out and then we'll just go over the answers for the quiz quiz in quotes because again it's not a quiz activity we'll just give it people one more minute to before um It's actually, I mean, I like this just because the music is kind of uh, amusing of the game. Okay, I'll start it at two eighteen, so in like in about a minute for my on my end. Oh, let's pick up theme. Ooh, I like the crew, the the frogs. Okay.
No, the quiz will only be based on, on the, the stuff we did today. I'll send an announcement uh, on what's going to be on the quiz, but it will be basically like problems that we kind of worked out today, just with different numbers, essentially. So it will only be based on the stuff of, the, of today. Okay, I think roughly all, all of you already joined, so let's see if I can...
Well, I hope you had. I I like the music of this game, so that's why I like it. Okay, let's just analyze the questions. Uh, oops. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's kind of addictive funds. Um, sounds bad. Okay, I'll just write the solutions on the iPad. Um, so let's go back to the iPad. Let me share my tablet again. As I said, like not uh, every single question. I think there were like two or three that you couldn't do right uh, with what I had said so far, but I, it was just to try to see uh, uh, how you would do. But... Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah, so let me call this online quiz or quiz game so that it's not confused with other things. So the first question was, they tell you that the limit and the majority of you got it correct, it looks like. So that's nice. Um, it, they tell you that the limit of a function as x approaches negative two is 16, and they want you to find what is um, the limit as x approaches negative two of the square root of, of that fun of f of x, okay? And so um, it is basically, um, these limit properties because uh, the idea is that the limit, so here's the, the answer. The limit as x approaches negative two of the square root of f of x is just the square root of that limit. So you can move the limit inside the square root, that's the idea. But then this, because of what the problem tells you that the square root of 16, uh, this is a good uh, reminder um, that when we talk about the square root of a number, in this case, we always mean the positive solution. So, you know, like a square root in general has like, um, you know, you would say that the square root of 16, like you could think about it as, as plus or minus four, but you would, whenever we write the square root of a number, we, you, we mean the, the positive one. Uh, that will be the convention for, for our class. Is that making sense? Are there any questions about uh, this one? Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, let me see if I can move this to this side. Actually. How about now? Is that okay? Uh, now the next one is also what's a limit question? Uh, sorry, a property of limits question. So problem two tells you that um, they, you know that the limit as x approaches eight of f of x is three. The limit as x approaches eight of g of x is 10. And they ask you for the limit of the ratio. And if you remember like the properties that I just wrote a couple of minutes ago, it is a ratio of the limits. So this is just the limit the limit as x approaches eight of f of x divided by the limit as x approaches eight of g of x. And so that gives you three divided by 10. Okay.
Is that making sense? Uh, the next one is kind of fun. Uh, it's more like a, um, it could look like a little bit of a tricky question, but it's just, um, what is the limit as X approaches 14 of square root of two, right? Let's see how many got this one correct. Uh, I haven't checked. Um, oh, everyone got it perfect. So that's good. Uh, so maybe I don't, Right, there's no dependency on X, so there's no X to plug in, right? So the answer only has has one choice. It has to be square root of two again. So everyone got that one correct, so that's good. So I, I don't I need to spend too much time explaining it uh, because, right, there's no X dependency, okay? So that's, that's good. Now, okay, now we're getting to some cases where there's more, uh, um, more mistakes. So the next one, problem four was um, to find the limit as x approaches one half of four x times x minus one quarter. Okay. Like, so there are different ways to do this. Like I'll do it in a way I mean, it's one of these questions where you can just give like an answer as a, uh, in a single line, but I'll try to break it into ways that looks like I'm exploiting more these properties about limits. So the first thing you can do is like, you notice that there's like a four you can pull out of the limit. So you can put it like this. So remember like constants can be taken out, out, out of a limit. And then when you once you do that, uh, there's a product, so you can just take the product of the limits. Again, like there are other ways to do it. I'm just giving you one where you kind of see like the properties that I wrote earlier explained. But this is not the only option to to write it down. Uh, and so this just gives you four times one half times what is one half minus one quarter, that's also one half, right? Well, I will write it here. So you get four times one half times one, sorry, one quarter, I should have that. And so this gives you one half. Is that making sense? Any questions about this one? Now, the next one was also, um, let's check about the next one. So the next one was the limit as x approaches zero of x cubed minus six x plus eight over x minus two. Okay. And here again, um, just to write down the, the properties of the limit explicitly, you can do like a ratio of limits. And so in the numerator, you'll get eight. In the denominator, you'll get negative two. And so overall, you get negative four. Okay, good. Ooh, this is exciting, interesting. Now we're getting close to the fun stuff. Perfect. Uh, Okay. 
yeah, the, the next one, six, is also relatively, I also put it here, it's relatively straightforward um, because it's also just plugging in. But the net, and seven is the one that caused problems, and that's good because like I haven't explained to you the technique. So uh, that's kind of what I was expecting. But just to do the next one, this is two over root of three x plus four over um, two over root of three x plus four plus two. But this one is just like substituting as well. So you get root of four plus two. This is two over two plus two, and this is uh, two quarters. So it's just two, one half. Okay. Okay, now seven is was the most problematic one uh, because again, I haven't told you actually how to do it. So I'll leave that one for, I'll skip seven for now because uh, I want to spend more time on seven. So let's just go over eight. So let me go to eight now. Eight was the limit as X approaches four of x squared plus 3x minus 28 divided by x minus 4. OK. And this one, OK, this one is actually of the more interesting kind. This is kind of like um, uh, the typical problems that you will be expected to know how to solve. Because like, again, if you try to plug in x with four, you'll get zero over zero. So this is one of those examples where you cannot just do that. The fact that there's like a x minus four in the numerator, denominator maybe suggests that you should um, factorize an x minus four upstairs if that's possible. So let's see if that can be done. That works because 28 is four times seven, right? So now you see everything has like an X minus four. And so you get the limit as X approaches four of X plus seven, which is just 11. Is that making sense? Or this one again was a little bit more interesting. So I don't know if there are any questions about that one. Okay, so just two more before the interesting one. So the next one is also one where you could just plug in. Yeah, here nothing goes wrong if you plug it in. So let's just plug it in. Uh, yeah, there's like this is kind of like if I'm asking the limit. Well, I mean, like usually the ones we're just plugging. Uh, well, yeah, we typically don't ask those, but more like where there's like a factorization or things like of that sort, or like properties of limits involved. Yes, the ones that we're just plugging in was just for like um, just to notice that sometimes you can just actually substitute the 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 expect, expect um the variable with the value but yeah i mean this is very common to i mean this is like there will always i don't should provide like some practice exams but yeah you'll definitely see a couple of questions which are just like finding limits which look like this ones basically uh so you get two over two plus two minus two divided by two plus four 
So what does that give you? It gives you one half minus two over six. And this is what? Minus three halves over six. Um, and this is, I mean, remember you can write this as minus, oops. Okay, did I do this correctly? So you get, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, good. This is going well. Yeah. So it is um uh, right, good, perfect. Thanks. I mean what I was going to say is that you can if it helps, you can write it as a two as a quotient a ratio of two fractions, because then there's like you can put this 12 and then uh this is minus one quarter. Perfect. Thanks. Right, but if you remember like this rule for multiplying ratio, uh, fraction um, to ratios, it was like the exterior ones with the interior ones. So that's why you get um, negative three over 12. So, I mean, at, at a minimum, this, some of these problems which were just plugging was like a good exercise to uh, uncertain uh, algebra, algebra simplification of expressions and things like that. Okay, and then let's go to 10, which also uh, seem to have been problematic. So this is good. Let's, let's talk about 10. Okay, so the thing about this one is that again, if you try to plug in, Naively, you will just get one half minus one half, which gives you zero, right? So you get here zero and you'll get here zero. So you cannot just plug in uh, naively, right? So you have to see if there's something else you can do. Um, so actually the, the, the thing that is convenient in this problem is to combine the, the, the two fractions in the numerator I mean, uh, I don't know how many steps I have to should show you here, um, but you can rewrite the numerator in this way. And now the, the advantage of doing it that way is that both fractions have the same denominator. So when they have the same denominator, you can just combine them out. Right, and then this is kind of similar to the previous one where it's like a fraction and a fraction. So if you prefer, you can write this one out like this. Okay, I should stop here to see if there are any questions up to this point. So everyone good with me so far? Let, just check all the steps to make sure that um, uh, they all make sense. Okay. Okay, so do you see like, hopefully now this uh, almost looks like there's some simplification available to us, right? Because the numerator is almost identical, right? 
it's almost identical to this factor in the denominator. They just differ by a um, overall minus sign, right? So actually you can, uh, when you cancel them out, you get a negative one instead of a one. Is that making sense? And so the answer had to be negative one quarter. Is that okay? Making questions up to the for this one up up to this point, unfortunately. Okay, so now, uh, oops. Okay, here it is. Okay, now I can tell you about um, about the tricky one, which I had not told you told you before how to do it. Um, the technique that you need to to do this one. So it's called rationalizing the one of the expressions, but let's just um, essentially what's going on is like a version of the difference of square formula. So let's do number seven, which again is kind of like more complicated. Okay. So again, if you look at number seven, the the thing is like, if you try to plug in X with zero, you get here one. So you get one minus one, which is zero. And then you get zero here. So here you're getting zero over zero, right? And that's not something that we can work with um, as, as it's written. So we have to manipulate this first, okay? And let's see, how should I wrote, uh, how should I say it? So the idea here for these problems is to um, multiply, I don't know if you have seen it this way before, like you multiply by the conjugate. Um, uh, does that expression uh, sound familiar? Like the conjugate of, of, this, of this numerator. I'm not sure, like just checking it. It's, Okay, so like uh, the idea is like the conjugate of uh, something like this is uh, where you just um, is the case keep this expression but but change the minus sign into a plus. So what? I, so the trick here is to multiply by the conjugate. So as I say, like the conjugate is just involves um, replacing the, the minus with a plus. And notice for this to um, work, um, for, it, for this to be the same expression, you have to multiply and divide by it so that like this is secretly like the number one. Right, all of, like since the numerator and the denominator are the same here, you, you're getting one. So it's just like it's, uh, writing one in a very odd way. This because again, this is like the number one since uh, they're the same expression. Okay. But now the denominator, the numerator, okay, so why do you do this? Because hopefully the numerator looks like a difference of squares, right? If you think about it, um, if you call this A and this B, 
you have here A and here you have B. So you have like A minus B times A plus B, right? And that's uh, it's A squared minus B squared. So what this is supposed to give you using the difference of square formula is um, root of one minus X squared minus one squared divided by X times. Is that making sense? This is this can be a little bit of all the ones we have done. I think this is the most confusing type. Um, so the thing is, basically, you're trying to find like a difference of square formula hidden in this in this problem. So uh, it, you have like you had here like a minus b. Again, this is kind of like a minus b and so you want to see a plus b so that you can use a, the difference of square formula so you get one plus x minus one divided times x squared root of one plus x plus one. And that it gives you um, and now that access cancel, which is great. And so you get the limit as x approaches zero of one over root of one plus x plus one. And that's um, which is one half. Is that making sense? Okay, so what I'll do tomorrow, I'll do tomorrow one or two more examples of this so that we get used to this technique. Um, but I think this is a good place to end. So what I'll do now, uh, as before, like I'll close our meeting so that the, just to record, uh, to save the video on the computer. And then like in 10 minutes or like five or 10 minutes, I'll just rejoin the meeting in case someone wants to come to office hours and I'll send an announcement. Um, yeah, I'll send an announcement in a couple of minutes, like which uh, with the problems that you should look for for the quiz tomorrow. I'll, as I mentioned, like I'll copy the pro the problems on the quiz would just be copy pasted from the list I give you to work on. So I'll just uh, tell you which ones to look for. So, but yeah, so yeah, I'll I'll rejoin this uh, Zoom meeting like in five or ten minutes if someone wants to ask me uh about the quiz uh or something else yeah the quiz will be like kind of like during the last 30 minutes of class so around like um 2 30 probably I'll, I'll send that in the information uh about the announce about the quiz okay yeah so i'll see you in a couple of minutes if someone wants to come to office hours if not i'll see you tomorrow